And for this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant by means of his death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Jesus Christ is the one to fulfill both of these rows. He brought about the covenant in his own blood, redeeming us out of the power of sin and the law, and then he continually pleads before the Father for us when we violate the very law that he died to bring us out of. In addition to this, he is overseeing the church of which he is the head, as it says in the book of Revelation. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one, like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace. And his voice was the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. The lampstands that are mentioned there represent the ages of the church over which he is in complete control. There he is walking around the lampstands, walking around the churches, checking our hearts and minds and doctrine. And he's here with us right now in some sense. So, Charlie, are you sure about what you're preaching? Ray, are you right with your neighbor? Phil? Phil, do you need an advocate today? Jesus Christ fulfilled those roles for us. He is in complete control of all of these things. Now, I ask you, how busy are you? Do you feel like you have too many tasks to perform at any given time? Because if you think that you have a plate full... I have only touched on the duties that he is fulfilling for us right now. I mean, all hail Jesus' name. What a great, wonderful Savior we serve. And Christ Jesus really is coming again. Unlike Peter and James, who slept while Jesus prayed in sweat, bloodied by anguish, we need to be awake and attentive to the hour that's coming. The Bible says that his return for the church is going to be in the twinkling of an eye. Just so you know, you blink your eye 15,000 times in a single day, and the muscle that causes your eye to blink is the fastest muscle in the entire body. You can blink five times in a single second. One blink takes 150 milliseconds. And Paul used this term so that we know that the action will be over before we even realize that it's happened. And when that moment comes, when Christ makes his call for his people and we're off to meet him in the clouds, the door will be shut. Paul says in the book of Corinthians, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So I'm going to conclude my thoughts here today with a quote about Jesus Christ. But we could go on forever. Our Creator has laid out a drama in which we are participants. The world is on a 7,000-year stage. Jesus Christ was promised at the beginning. He was continuously anticipated during the entire first act, which lasted until the year 4,000, and he arrived on time. His role was fulfilled in a presentation which was hard for us to follow, and yet which astounded us in its execution. When it appeared that the play was over and the cross had won, we realized that the second act had just begun. One more incredible than the panorama of time past. Like the first act, his, his stage is now one of anticipation. One in which we now dwell and participate in. But we're looking forward to his second entrance. Considering what he did at his first entrance, the second should be simply astonishing. What is your passion? What is your allegiance? And what is your hope? Where are your eyes directed? If you can't answer Jesus to these questions, you need to reevaluate yourself and redirect whatever is lacking so that Jesus, and only Jesus, is the answer to the question. Count Ludwig von Zinzendorf, he got it right. He says, I have one passion. It is he, only he. Without Christ, the New Testament wouldn't exist, and the Old Testament would remain unfulfilled ending on a curse for all mankind. Jesus Christ is the central theme of the Bible, from the first line of Genesis to the very last line of 
revelation. He is our hope. He is our redeemer, our sustainer, our joy. He is our peace. He is our all in all. He is our God. Now, I'd like the musicians to go ahead and come up behind me, and I want to speak to the people real quietly for a moment. I'd like to take just a second with all of you and enter the cross of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that there is none righteous. No, not one. It includes every person here. We are all unrighteous in and of ourselves. And the Bible says that all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. And God is glorious. He's amazingly glorious. And the Bible says that our sin, the wages of that sin, is death. We earned death by what we've done and by what we inherited through Adam. But the gift of God, the Bible says, is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Charlie Garrett, a sinning person, Christ died for me and for you. And God doesn't make it very hard. He says, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if I don't know anybody in here what their state with Jesus Christ is. Only you do. But all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will forgive you, and he will grant you eternal life, not because you deserve it, but because he loves you enough to step out of eternity and die on a cross. I wouldn't do that for a maggot, and I wouldn't send my son to the cross for a cockroach. But Jesus Christ died for us. What a great and loving Savior. Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for allowing me to speak on the cross today and on the person and work of Jesus Christ. How glorious he is and how wonderful it is to be called a son of God through what he did and not because of anything I've ever done or ever will do. I love you, Lord, and I pray for any person here who has never made the commitment to Jesus Christ that they will simply stop playing around with you and stop trying to earn your favor and just simply call on Jesus as Lord. And it's in his beautiful and precious and glorious name that I pray. Amen.